Hello, happy mm -hmm. Thursday. Welcome to Teal Talk. I am Jenny Guy. I'm Mediavine's marketing manager, and I am here alongside the wonderful and incomparable Amber Bracegirdle, who is a Mediavine co-founder. Amber, will you say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. So today we are getting to do a super fun AMA where you ask Amber anything that you want to know from her and she's going to tell you the answers, whether it's the mysteries of the universe, SEO, uh, the beginnings of Mediavine. We had a ton of questions online already, so we're going to get started with that first, what we already have. I'm going to go ahead and put a fair warning out there that <laughs> about 30 seconds before we started the uh, broadcast, uh, my maintenance at my apartment complex started pounding on my door and opened my garage door because apparently there's a leak. Um, I told them that they needed to not be here right now. So we're, we're really fingers crossed that they stay away for the next 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Uh, so we're all going to open. I have to go on record as saying I nearly wet myself because I told Jenny that that was going to happen. I she said, did. You need to put a sign on the door that says maintenance go away because they seem to always bug Jenny in the most inopportune times. And they'll be, they won't come for weeks. And then it's only when you think that it's going to be safe. And I had no idea. He's like, you have, there's a leak and I don't know where it is. I'm like, perfect. Perfect. <sighs> All righty. So well, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start out with some easier questions uh, just to get you a little warmed up, get your, get the juices flowing. We're going to start out with good. Rosemary Malloy. She asked, what made you decide, decide to start a full service ad management company? Tell us the Mediavine story. Oh, well, it's sort of a long one. I think there were some other ones that sort of asked how I met the guys and stuff like that. And it all kind of rolls in together, which I think is why we decided to sort of just tell the story. Um, so a lot of you may not know, I am a food blogger. I've been a food blogger for 10 years. Uh, pay no attention to the fact that Blue Bonnet Baker hasn't been updated in almost three years. Um, I still run Food Fanatic, which is our food site. Um, so I consider that you know my con contribution to the blogging world um, these days. Um, but basically, I went to a food blogging conference, and I am not known for being um, demure or quiet, um, especially, I know, oh, what? Shocker. Um, especially when I hear people sort of giving inaccurate information that I think will hurt bloggers. And so I spoke up at a couple, couple of different sessions um, and Eric was one of the guys that was just there. He was there to try and meet the food blogger because the guys wanted to start a food site. They had been told, and I didn't hear this part of it until after the fact um, of us working together, but they'd been told by their ad company that Hollywood gossip was not a lucrative enough field and that's why they were niche of blogging. And that's why they were not making as much money as they thought they should for the traffic level they had. And so they were trying to break into a lifestyle genre of sites. Um, and I was actually, I spent 12 years as a fraud analyst for some big names, Travelocity, lastminute.com. That was sort of my career. And food blogging was a, was a side hobby. And when Eric walked up to me and said, you know, hey, I'd, I'd love for you to come in and work with us. I was like, well, I'm, you know, I've got a job and but I'll consult for you. Um, and then right around the time that I got pregnant with my first son, I, I was traveling a ton for the job that I had and I wanted to stop traveling. And so I asked the guys if they'd be willing to take me full time and they agreed, which was wonderful. Um, and it allowed me to stay home with our baby that we waited 10 years to have. And so pause, yes. who are the guys? Oh, Eric, Matt and Steve. And yeah. those guys would be? the other co-founders of Mediavine, the original co uh, three founders of Mediavine itself um, that started the Hollywood Gossip and TV Fanatic, Movie Fanatic, and then Food Fanatic is our fourth site. So, Got it. So yeah. Continue. Baby that so, you waited 10 years to have. Yep. And so then uh, it was probably, I want to say it was a year and a half in, of running Food Fanatic, and Eric told this story a little bit at our conference uh, this past year, um, but our ad income sort of died by half overnight, and the ad company was just like, don't know, don't know what the problem is, uh, we can't really ex explain it, um, and we had four families to feed, plus a mountain of contributors. There are contributors for all of those sites, 
And uh, so then Eric said to me, you know, or I think he said it to the guys too, but said, I think I can build some technology that will help us be better at this. And so he built it. And then um, my best friend is Jamie from my baking addiction. We've been friends for almost as long as we've been blogging. We both started our blog in the same year. And, um, she, you know, I happened to mention this to her and she was like, well, I'm not happy with my ad company either. Can you guys help me? Uh, and that was kind of all she wrote. <laughs> Once you get uh, permission to represent one site that you don't own, uh, it kind of opens the doors um, to you being able to represent anybody. Uh-oh, got a little bit of a freeze here, everyone. Um, I don't know if you can hear me or... Hi everyone, I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, so Amber is frozen. Hopefully we can get her to come back in. Hello, Mohammed, for saying hi. We've got some questions for her in the comments. Um, don't worry, we'll get Amber back. Uh, she's in her office in San Antonio and I know that there, there's been some weather there. Um, okay, so to let's go ahead and talk about what we've got coming up on Teal Talk. I'll, I'll reiterate this at the end. But we've got um, next week, or two weeks from now, on the 25th of October, we've got Marie Leggett. She is the curvy fashionista. And she's going to be telling all and really focusing on affiliate marketing. And we've got some really exciting stuff coming up this uh, fall and winter, uh, including um, some going to have Steffi Predmore on, who is the director of influencer marketing. And she and I are going to be on here talking, using our experience working with brands and working with influencer marketing campaigns and affiliate marketing to talk about pitching and PR and putting together a really effective media kit. And so we're going to be on together for that. And we're really looking forward to it. Uh, we have been called the White Christmas Sisters before. We'll let you decide why. And, and we do like to wear matching jean jackets um, and say awkward things. So that could be a lot of fun. We're then going to have another session on organization and talking really about how to use Airtable, um, a program out there that is great for bloggers on how to how to keep yourself organized. And that's a great way to wind up Q4 and, and the year 2018 and look forward to having really great organization come going forward uh, in, in 2019. And then finally, we were going to have an incredible um, an incredible session on video and YouTube with Ashley Prisby. She's phenomenal. And um, I'm so excited to have her on and to be able to come talk with us. Uh, she's going to show us some behind the scenes things. Oh, is Amber back? Hi, I'm here. My, Hi. Office, my office's Wi-Fi just died. Okay. So now, so now I, I turned on my mobile hotspot because I know that Google Fi is a little bit more uh, reliable. Luckily, I love talking to myself. Uh, so that, <laughs> Sorry, that's guys. good. That's okay. Hey, we're back. We're back. So I think we were kind of wrapping up the media vine story a little bit. We were getting into how, how we went from, so you were talking about Jamie from my baking addiction and yeah. how she, she was one of the first bloggers. She also, um, works with she us here at media the, line. The first, yes. yep. the first blogger. And then we started with her, Carly from Buns in My Oven. I, I always, I know the, our original six uh, to this day. So it was Carly from Buns in My Oven, Shug Amy from Sugary Sweets, Jocelyn from Inside Brew Crew Life, uh, Brandy from Nutmeg Nanny, and Gina from Run Into the Kitchen. Um, and they were our first six guinea pigs. And they said, have at it. And all of a sudden, we were like, oh, oh, this, this could be a thing. Right. Um, and it's just kind of steamrolled and never stopped since then. So that's fantastic. That's when, the media of my story. We didn't, when we, sorry, when we built the technology, when Eric built the technology, it was for us, right? It wasn't for anybody else. Um, and so there was no like deliberate, oh, we're going to start an ad management company. That's the thing we're going to do. It was just kind of, uh, you know, when Jamie said, can you help me too? It was one of those things that um, Eric said, well, if we were going to help anybody, it would be Jamie because she'd helped us grow food fanatics so much. And yeah, that was kind of all she wrote from there. And 3,700 plus publishers later, here we are. Yeah, here we are. 
Woo. It's exciting. And we'll talk a little bit more about the origins of Mediavine and more about what Mediavine has coming up in the future a little bit later. But right now I want to address a couple questions that we got during during the big freeze, as we will now call it. Uh, Marjorie Pilly said, hi. Hi, Marjorie. What keywords yeah. should you use in a recipe card and in the video upload? Just a few, many covering how many types of categories. And just to preface this by saying Amber knows a lot about SEO. She has an amazing podcast called The Theory of Content. If we can share that link, that would be great. And she does that with Joshua Unseth. And so she's gonna, she's got all sorts of great information about SEO. So I'm gonna let her take that question away. Yep, in fact, we're recording two episodes tomorrow. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so the keywords that you should use there shouldn't be things that you are, uh, using as tags. So it should be like, um, like if it's a recipe for, for blueberry muffins, the cat, the keywords you should use should be things like muffins, breakfast, brunches, um, blueberries. It shouldn't be blueberry muffins, um, because you're, you're covering that in other aspects of what you're trying to do. Um, I would say like, you don't need to go crazy. You, I mean, probably no more than five or 10 is plenty. Um, more information is better, obviously, but I, I think, you know, Google's going to use probably two or three out of what you put there, but just try to use the broad overview keywords for what you're writing about. So even if your recipe was for, you know, cinnamon blueberry muffins with chocolate streusel, like that sounds awful. I hate blueberries. Um, but if that's what your recipe was, you would still use muffins and breakfasts and brunches and blueberries and yeah, so. So how does that all feed into long tail keywords and being really specific and, and niching it down in that way, trying to rank for well, those long tail keywords? So the, the keyword stuff that, that's in the recipe card now and that videos are looking for is very different to like a post title, which is okay. a long tail, what a long tail uh, keyword is, um, right. you know, that's really where you're telling Google what your post is about. Whereas the keywords in the recipe card are trying to sort of catch a different part of the algorithm, um, where it's saying, you know, if someone's searching for a general muffin recipe, or then they get more, a little bit more specific, like your, your recipe card may catch that based on the other things in the post. Speaking of recipes, Casey Johns wants to know, how do we use recipe videos to monetize with Mediavine? Oh, well, we have a bunch of video products. Um, <laughs> we talk about them all the time. Um, you know, you can, you upload them to your dashboard and you can use them uh, in the sticky video player on mobile, um, or sorry, the adhesion video player on mobile, the sticky video player on desktop. Um, uh, you can set a featured video that will be used across your site. Um, you can create individual videos for each recipe that um, that will monetize a single blog post, but we also have ways for you to basically monetize every blog post as well. But you've got to get the video up into your dashboard so that you can activate all of those different options. And if you email publishers at mediabind.com, we'll walk you through those. And what if I'm really focusing on growing my YouTube subscribers? Does that mean that I should not upload my videos to the Mediavine dashboard? Is am I, am I only able to dip once? Absolutely not. You can do both. And in fact, we encourage both. Um, you should be um, uploading them to YouTube because YouTube is Google's, it, it's the world's second largest search engine. Um, and we even have a way for you to add your YouTube channel ID to your Mediavine uh, dashboard so that at the end of your videos when they play, you can invite people to subscribe to YouTube. And yes, Heather, it's right there behind me. I just lifted it up there and moved it around three times and it's really heavy. It is heavy. <laughs> We're talking about the metal sign behind us. We, we had it, uh, Heather, um, our manager of publisher support, uh, her husband made that metal sign that's behind me that's of our logo. Um, for Haven this year. It's pretty so. sweet. All righty, let us, let's go back a little bit. So Ryan McKenna wants to know, and there are actually many requests on this question. Okay. Do we have any, does Mediavine have any plans to offer web hosting? Oh man. Um, yeah. So it's something we've kicked around a lot. Uh, we haven't landed on a specific like roadmap 
but it is something that we are talking about a lot internally. Um, but I don't have any definitive yes or no, but it's not something we're ignoring. It's not something that we haven't considered. We just want to do it the Mediavine way, which means, you know, how do we do this long term? How do we do it with um, a lot of thought um, into how it will help your businesses, not hurt them? Uh, so, yeah, watch this space, I guess, on that one. Fantastic, potentially in the future, but stay tuned. Okay, so Chris Dunlow, niece, or niecey, I'm not sure. Sponsored post opportunities seem to be very limited at this time. What are your future plans for this aspect of the business? How do you see it evolving and growing? Okay, so we are very, very dedicated to sponsored work, um, but we also only have two people in that department, and there are almost 4,000 of you. Um, so even though it seems like they're limited, those two people are actually working around the clock. Um, and it's, it's just that, you know, it, an influencer marketing campaign takes a lot of work um, and a lot of hours. And so some of the stuff that we have going on is we are working on becoming sort of making more relationships outside of Mediavine so that we can sort of white label what we're doing a little bit. Um, where say that um, there's a PR agency that wants to do influencer marketing but doesn't have the bandwidth themselves to do it. They right. could basically say that they do it, but then they come to Mediavine and we do it for them, um, which then allows us to uh, sort of have our people doing more of the hands-on work with the bloggers rather than going out and trying to get the campaign work. Um, and so right now they're doing a little bit of both. Um, so our plan is to sort of scale it that way, um, which I know I think will be um, a much better way forward, which will give more opportunity to all of you out there. Um, I just would ask you to always remember, you know, there, there are 4,000 of you. There's plenty of people that are like, will say, um, you know, I've never, I've never gotten a campaign and it's not that we haven't pitched you. It's that we do extremely boutique campaigns. We don't spray and pray. So we don't send out an email to everybody that we think might fit the campaign and say, hey, who will do this for $20? That's not something we've ever done. It's not something we're ever going to do. Part of our jobs is to be your advocate. Um, that's kind of how I've always approached influencer marketing is it's my job for us to advocate for you and make sure that you're getting paid the rate you want to get paid um, and not trying to nickel and dime you to do it for the least possible amount of money. And that just, it takes more time to do it that way. Um, and no so one comes kind of for those campaigns. So it's not a campaign no. where they're saying, we want to work with 200 influencers and we want to give each of them uh, a pair of socks and $5. Those aren't the types right. of campaigns that we we do or would be, as as Amber said, be interested in doing. And and I think if you've, if you've done a campaign with us, you know that, our team takes care of every single aspect of it. Steffi and Jamie are amazing and yeah. they're constantly being the liaison between the brand and you and making sure that you're not getting any, having any trouble that no, that everyone is getting the best possible outcome that there is. So I think that that's right. Um, and, and I think an important aspect of that to keep in mind, right? Mine does not limit you from getting your own work or from working with other companies as well um, that do this kind of work because our job is to be your long-term partner and to um, make sure that you are working with um, diversifying your income as much as possible, right? Um, and we say that as your ad manager, right? Don't rely 100% on ads because we can't control the market. And so we want you to be, you know, we're going to do our best to go out and get campaigns for as many people as we can, but at the same time, Nobody knows your audience in your blog and what brands are going to fit your blog as well as you do. So we will absolutely help people. I mean, you know, Jenny and Steffi have this great session that they did at our conference this year. It's on the YouTube channel that talks about how to pitch brands and how to make your about page uh, really great so that brands, when they look at it, they, they want to work with you. Like we'll provide all of those resources if you need our help, like proofing a letter, whatever, we are here for that. But we also want to make sure that you know we're not limiting you from going out and getting that kind of work for yourself. And we don't, it's not something that, I know there are other ad providers out there that make you basically sign away exclusivity to sponsored work as well. We do not do that. Your sponsored work is your sponsored work. 
um, if we get the campaign for you, there is a, a rev share that we take. But if we if you get it yourself, that's not something we're entitled to. We want you to make money. So that's the yeah. bottom line in every possible yeah. avenue that you can that's that's and Absolutely. we want ads to be a part one of your streams but not your only one um mm -hmm. michelle palin actually uh, came in and said she appreciates the way that mediavine does sponsored campaign she said they may not come off but when they do they are quality don't have unreasonable asks and involve great communication steffi and jamie do great amazing coordinating these we really appreciate that uh, okay, so let us, oh, Michelle actually asked a question. She said, on the topic of sponsored posts, but outside of Mediavine, I'm finding lately that I'll have a great conversation with the brand via email or over the phone. They say they definitely want to work together, that they'll follow up, then suddenly a few weeks later, they don't have a budget or they start ghosting. Any tips when that starts happening? You're better at that than me, Jen. I, I don't know <laughs> what I would do in that situation other than make some gestures at the computer screen. I mean, what, the gestures at the computer screen are always a, a viable option for most circumstances. Uh, maybe not when you're doing a live and the maintenance man knocks. But um, Michelle, I would say I would make sure during that initial conversation that you are getting as much information as you possibly can. And you're taking notes on who you're talking to, what they're interested in, all of those things. And get one point person, if it's possible, that you are in contact with. So it's not just the brand. It's a human being that you can reach back out to and say, hey, now you don't want to become a nuisance. And sometimes things happen. And sometimes the higher ups are telling them that they can't spend the budget that they thought that they had. And that has happened to me personally. So I get it completely completely. But what you can do then at that point is just circle back around, talk to that brand, come back, say, you know, come, come and talk to me when you've got, when things have changed, when circumstances have changed for you. And then you just put it in your calendar, put it in your Google calendar reminder that two months later, you're going to follow back up. You're going to update them on all the things that you've got going on, all the awesome that you've been doing the last two months and why they're still such a great fit for you and your brand and your demographic. So I think also if it's a brand that you really feel an affinity for, I think that potentially there's a way to negotiate something other than what maybe you'd initially spoken about. Maybe a little less than your regular fee, but also an affiliate program, more product going on for six months. Maybe they're going to put some of their uh, their fee for you into amplifying social campaigns on your behalf. There's ways that you just let them know that you're open to negotiating and finding a deal that works for both of you. Right. Uh, and, yes. and a lot of yeah, and I, I will say one thing that I've mentioned several times uh, previously, um, if, if, you know, originally you were talking about creating original content and all of these things, and suddenly their budget falls apart, something you can consider is older content you have that you know performs well, that you're willing to turn into a sponsored post for two months and go back to them and pitch them that for a lower cost. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, recycle, recycle your content that you know performs. You can provide them with analytical data that shows that it performs and has consistent traffic, um, and then turn it into something that is sponsored that has their messaging, or you add a video that has their product, or you know something like that. And you know it doesn't have to stay stay sponsored forever, but you can negotiate something maybe that isn't quite as much work for you but still keeps that relationship open and it also shows that you're willing to be flexible and come up with unique solutions and all of these things. And I think that that definitely uh, makes so much more sense in terms of like a seasonal thing. So if you know for a fact that your, um, what is it Steffi, is it your ranch roll-ups? Her cream cheese ranch roll-ups that are always, it's her most popular recipe and she loves them. They are, they are a little bit janky a little bit Midwestern, but they are absolutely delicious. And if you know for a fact that there's a time in November and December when everyone is doing their holiday party planning, that those are going to go viral, then you go out and you pitch the tortilla companies in September and on August and tell them that you've got a great recipe that you know is guaranteed traffic and that potentially you're, you're willing to include their brand in that messaging. So mm -hmm. there's lots of options. There's, there's many different ways to uh, go about this. Yeah, okay. or that that tortilla company is listed in your create card as the recommended brand. Yes, little that's product. right. Yeah, you can recommend a little bit of a little bit of cross pollination, a little bit of that. Okay, Ryan. So let's ask. Let's answer a few general questions here. So Ryan McKenna had another question. He said, "How do you manage your site getting big? 
like receiving buyout offers, thinking of new directions to take it, et cetera. How do you know whether to take the risk or carry on and think of what might have been? Ouch, that's tough. That is tough. And I I think a, a little bit it, it is whether your site is a passion project for you or not. And if you're still able to come up with content ideas that make you excited. Um, some of it is how much of your personal identity is wrapped up in your brand. Um, you know, I can't imagine the pioneer woman selling her site. It would, it would immediately fall apart. She'd lose most of her audience because the pioneer woman is so wrapped up in Reed Drummond. Um, you know, and it was that way early on before there was the Walmart and, and all of those things, uh, you know, the Walmart deals and the Food Network show. It was that way long before that. Um, and so I think that really is the question is, you know, are you able to continue being, being excited about content? And I mean, I know everybody gets writer's block and everybody is like, oh, I don't want to create another post. But um, if you're still, if you still feel like you have things to write about, I would not ever sell a site. I mean, I still own Blue Bonnet Baker. I've been blogged on it for three years. I will never sell that site ever in my life because it was a huge part of my life. It led to where we are today. Um, and, you know, everywhere in my life, Twitter and et cetera, I'm still Blue Bonnet Baker. Um, but if I had a site that I wasn't quite so emotionally invested in, uh, yeah, I, I think it, it's going to be a gut check and you're going to have to kind of go down um, the pro and con list. I'm a big fan of a pro and con list of of doing that. Um, so, yeah, that's a tough question, but I think it's a different answer for every person. Like so many of the things that we do, it's all about your own personal. It's as as my good friend Jamie Lieberman would say, it depends. It's the depends. lawyer answer. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Betsy Eves wants to know when is Create going to be available with the Gutenberg update? Uh, Jordan Colley, where are you? I have no idea. <laughs> Jordan I'm not and sure. I talked, yeah, Jordan and I have not talked about that. The last time I talked about it, they said that they were they were pretty sure that it was going to be all wrapped up soon, but. That was, I, I don't know. Sorry, Betsy. All right, that's okay. We'll have someone weigh in here. We'll have someone weigh in, no problem. Okay, yeah. Karen Tedesco says, I'd like some insight into addressing the page speed audit tool. I have lots of red in my results from third-party images, style sheets, and JavaScript, as I'm guessing many of us using Genesis child themes do. Eric says, quote, uh oh, we're mentioning the hawk. Is he going to show up? Oh, boy. You need to get rid of all that synchronous JavaScript and any and all third-party images and style sheets. But how the heck do we do that without having to completely customize our themes and delete many plugins? Is it a reasonable priority to hire someone to go in and do this complex work? work um it is but i think i saw somebody else quote like fifteen hundred dollars to do that kind of stuff and it's really not that's not where we're going with that um eric obviously is a little bit obsessed with page speed you might have noticed he also um i, I love it it, Eric and I've been friends for a long time now. I consider him kind of like my little brother. And in the same way that your little brother gets super geeky and passionate about Pokemon, like that's how Eric is about page speed. <laughs> and I've had many, many conversations with him where he's like, I don't understand why these bloggers let these, these companies come in and have access to their site in this way. It makes me so mad for them. And it's very endearing to me. Like, I love that about him. He's so passionate about it. Um, but really what we're saying is, you know, things like um, Gravatar, right? Everybody turns on Gravatar um, on your website because it gives you the cute little icons next to every picture. Um, but that thing has not been like worked on. It should be an asynchronous script. It's not. Um, it should not load in the way that it does. It's awful for page speed. And literally turning that off can cause your page speed to jump by 20 points easily. I, I know when I turned it off for a blue bonnet baker, that's exactly what happened. Um, and so really it's about like if you can't pay someone or you don't want to pay someone it's really about ferreting out the things that you can control so like a lot of us way back in the day if we've been blogging a long time we worked with different influencer networks and things like that that were, would require us to put um a tracking pixel on our site and we haven't worked with them in years and so um 
we can pull that tracking pixel off our site. It doesn't need to be there anymore. It's stuck in a widget somewhere and we forgot it was there, but it's slowing down our site. Those are the things we can control. There are certain things you can't control, like how your social sharing plugin loads. But what you can do, especially if it's something that you're paying for, is you can ask them for an asynchronous version, um, which would at least allow you to, um, the difference between synchronous and asynchronous, so you have to think of it kind of like um, traffic on a highway. Um, and you get, say you get to a point where traffic's trying to merge. Um, synchronous scripts are basically the jerk that like cuts in front of you and never lets anybody in. Um, and asynchronous, everybody takes their turn, right? Um, and so you have to tell the jerks, give me an asynchronous script. I'm paying you. I don't want you to slow down my site. Um, Camilla, you, anybody can turn, turn off Gravatar. It's in the discussion settings of WordPress. Um, somewhere. If someone can, Susanna, can you put a screenshot in there of where it is in WordPress? It's in the same spot for everybody in WordPress. Um, and what would it look but, like without it? Just that no one, you don't have the little tiny images little next icon. to someone's comments. Yeah, it's, that's not a problem. Yeah, it's, it's not a thing. In the comments, like in the comments only. Yeah, in the comments only. In the com I mean, some author boxes are tied to Gravatar. And that's a little bit more complicated and you may need your designer's help or a tech or tech help to point at a static image in your media library instead of Gravatar. Oh, thanks, Megan. Um, but um, it's it's not hard to do. Um, and really, like if for some somebody relying on Gravatar to, to pull the author box picture in is really, to me, just lazy coding. They want it to work for everyone. And so they um, they do it that way instead of providing like a way for you to customize that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's how I feel about that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna share some some sweet sweet love that we got from Holly Baker. She says thanks for your Q4 RPM challenge. As someone who hopes to apply to join MediaVine's family soon, this audit process has been so helpful to me. Thanks for all the resources you share. Oh yay! I'm so glad. That's exactly what we wanted out of that. Um, you know, the idea being that that has the goal has always been for us to help people make their blogs better. Um, it's something that we're so passionate about here. Um, you know, it was funny when we sat down in January and Eric said, you know, Google's really big on this. We need a mission statement. And then he didn't want to tell any of us what his idea for it was. And we were like, no, just say it, just say it. And then he said, building, helping content creators build sustainable businesses. And all of us were just like, why wouldn't you say that? That's it. That's exactly it. Like it, ads aren't even in the, the thing. Like, who cares about Only the beginning. Yeah, uh, exactly. So Rose, Rose Siders, who is one of our publisher support specialists, just said, most typical readers don't have an avatar anyway, so you're not really losing out on much by not having it and a lot to gain in terms of site speed. Amen. Uh, very Rose. true. Thank you, Rose. Yeah. Rose, preach it. Uh, that's actually uh, with reference to Gravatar that we were just talking about. Okay, let's uh, let's address Bita Hashimpur's question. She says, do you have any recommendations on how to shift your mindset to be more business-minded and less hobby as your site grows? Also, how to build a team for yourself that can support you and help you grow? Yeah, so one of the most eye-opening things for me uh, coming from the regular blogosphere and into the Eric Hochberger, Matt Reichenthal, Steve Marzi way of thinking is that content is your product and you should find multiple ways to use that content because that's the product that you're selling. Um, and so what I mean by that is you should never approach a blog post as one and done. Um, you know, we, t we talk about on theory of content all the time, the parboil post that we did. Um, but we wrote six different posts about parboiling, guys. If I can write six posts about parboiling, you can write six posts about blueberry muffins. You can find a way. Um, and I think it's just one of those things where you have to sort of pull back into the macro view, the, the overview, and, you know, zoom out and say, um, you know, I have this post that I'm ranking fifth for. I want to rank second or third or first, 
how do I do that? The way that you do that is by writing more about the thing you want Google to recognize you being an expert in. Um, and so I think a lot of bloggers, when they start as a hobby, they're just writing about the things that they, they're passionate about and that they want to share about. Like with my own stuff, it was my grandmother's recipes. It was Tex-Mex food because I wasn't living in Texas at the time. And dang, I missed enchiladas. Um, and so I started learning more about that kind of food and writing about it on my blog. And really the only thing that I significantly ranked for and to this day is still my number one search term is a copycat recipe for a barbecue restaurant called Rudy's Creamed Corn. And anybody who's ever had it knows that that stuff is some good stuff. And literally the only recipe that was out there for it was a diet version. And it was just like, no, no. If I'm going to have cream corn, that's not where I'm going with that. And so I ranked really well for that. Now, you know, looking back on it 10 years later, I really could have grown my, so, my site by creating a ton more either Rudy's copycat recipes or other barbecue recipes that for other chains or, you know, stuff like that. I could have, I could have really capitalized on that and grown Blue Bonnet Baker that way. Just so happens I met a dude named Eric Hochberger right around the same time and everything went kablooey. So, um, <laughs> you know, but Speaking of which, he's in here. Off. He's lurking. I just saw him. He just, okay. he just emojied. Yeah. We know you're I, here, I Eric. We see you. It's, we say you his talk name. about it's him like, and he shows up. It, it's like Bloody Mary. You say Bloody Mary enough times and there he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's I know. true. I know. Uh, so talk about building a team, Amber, because we actually had someone ask uh, as well about about how Mediavine has grown and, and hiring a team. So talk a little bit about how you build a team for your blog, how you build a team for Mediavine. <laughs> Always lurking. I know. I saw. I know. We, yeah. um, so um, I think it comes down to the mission, right? What's the mission for your blog? As, as much as I hate to tell Eric he's right because his ego doesn't need to get any bigger. Um, he was right about us having a mission statement and we sort of had a mission without that mission statement and that's how we found the the original crew that we had um, but having a mission statement and a goal for what we wanted to do with Mediavine really helped us find the right people um, that you know weren't just looking for a job they were looking to be part of something bigger um, and I think you have to do that even, you know, with your single blog, even if you think, oh, my blog's not that big, I don't need a mission statement, you do, you need to have a plan for where you want to go. And then you can find, um, you can find the uh, people need to help you. Um, and it's really about, it, look for the small details, right? Like look for the people who are actually um, reading your site or have familiarity with your content or your content type and aren't just looking to make a quick buck. Um, they need, you need people that aren't tone deaf to the thing you're trying to do. I'm a big person on, on tone deafness. Like that is something that I, I hope everyone is experiencing with Mediavine is we try very, very hard not to be tone deaf ever. Um, and I think it's one of the secrets to our success is, is that we do come from a place of understanding what your pain points are and we try not to lose sight of that. Um, and I think that's what you need from your team as well. Absolutely. Good answer. And I always, I even expand that why, uh, the why mission statement for your blog into writing a bio for your blog and figuring out what kind of things you want your audience to get when they come to your site. Think of adjectives that you want them to feel when they read your posts. Or what kind of voice are you speaking in? What is your aesthetic? Write a bio for that blog. Think of who would play your blog in a Lifetime original movie. Um, <laughs> definitely. And ask the questions to people who, as you said, understand where you're coming from and aren't tone deaf. Um, great mm -hmm. answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Melissa Armstrong says, sort of a broad question, but what do you see holding me or other bloggers back from growing? I'm looking for ways that I'm not thinking outside of the box or seeing the bigger picture. She said she feels like you, Amber, are a great inspiration for success. Oh, well, Melissa, you're so sweet. Miss and I have known each other for a long, long time. Um, and she, that's a very kind thing for her to say. Um, sure. I think the thing that holds bloggers back a lot of the time is they get stuck in a bubble 
of, well, this is how all the other bloggers are doing it, or this is all how all the other bloggers in my niche are doing it. So I have to do it that way. Um, and, you know, Eric and Matt and Steve and I came up like early on and they, they experienced it with me is, um, you know, I was here saying, oh, well, we can't let people copy our content from Food Fanatic. That's, that's how duplicate content, like it's your site banned from Google. And they were like, Amber, what the heck are you talking about? Um, because they had used syndication to grow their sites. But I had been at a session at a, a conference, a blogging conference, where a blogger you know, stated that, that she had been blacklisted from Google because a scraper site was copying her content. And I've come to learn over the last five years that that wasn't the case. Like it, it literally could not have been the case. And it's how she'd explained it to herself. Um, you know, and I know that she truly believed that's what had happened. But so long as you're getting a link back, having someone else have your content is not something that Google is worried about. Um, duplicate content, the idea of duplicate content does exist at Google, but it exists with your own site. And so I see a lot of times where bloggers like something will just burn like wildfire through the, the blogosphere and no one checks sources or checks like where did that come from or, you know, why are we thinking about it that way? And, and it's really one of those things where it's like, come on guys, step outside of the noise and think about it logically for a second. Like I, I approach that the same thing with SEO, right? People hear the words or the acronym SEO and they freak and they're like, oh, I don't know it and I just don't know what to do and, and they get paralyzed. And the thing about SEO is it's like, just stop and think about what you as a human who uses Google types into Google and that's your starting point. Um, and it really is that straightforward and simple. Um, but I think bloggers just get too wrapped up in, in what everyone else is doing or in their own heads and they, they can't pull themselves out of that. And so a lot of times it really just takes someone saying to them, well, that's not how a reader or a normal human that doesn't know anything about blogging views this situation. So why are you approaching it in that way? Um, you need to be approaching it in the way that your reader is. Um, yeah. And not trying to so, game the system and not trying to think yeah. of like little, little special. Well, I mean, that was, that was a long, that was a long thing for a long time though. It's, it's yeah, trying it to, if, if I can figure out a special way and then I'm going to, I'm going to be position zero. I know I will if I just did X, Y, and Z. And it's really just about write more content. Mm -hmm. Just that straightforward and simple, write more content, write yeah. more good content. So. And get feedback from people who aren't, as you said, outside of that blogosphere, you've got to step outside the bubble. It's, it's helpful to have feedback from both, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, you know, we've had folks lately who said, Oh, you know, I've had complaints about the number of ads on my site. Um, yada, yada, yada. And here's the thing. Every time that someone has said that to me, the complaint has come from another blogger, not a reader. The only people counting ads are bloggers <laughs> because like it stop and think about how you use Facebook, right? Facebook, uh, never runs out of ads. Instagram never runs out of ads. But me as a, as an avid Instagram user, I never sit there and count how many ads are showing up in my Instagram feed. Like I don't sit there and do that. I acknowledge them when I see them and scroll past them, but I'm not sitting there counting them. Um, and readers don't do that with your website either. Um, it's really just other bloggers doing that. Fun. So, yeah. Uh, well, thank you for your question and your compliment, Melissa. We all agree. Okay. Let us talk about some exciting things that might be on the horizon. Lisa Huff wants to know, what does Mediavine have planned for 2019? Are we working on anything new? Oh my goodness, I mean, we are. Obviously, yes. So, so many things. I mean, technology has always been a big focus for us, but it I, I feel like we're doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on technology um, over the next 18 months. I mean, and beyond, obviously, as things change in the ad world, as they always do. But, you know, Create was a huge thing for us. It's been a focus for a long time. It's something that... What is Create, um, Amber? Create is our WordPress plugin. 
uh, that provides a nice, pretty spot for your most valuable content with schema markup. Um, right now we've got uh, recipe cards and uh, how-to cards, which can actually be used in a multitude of ways. We saw someone the other day that used it to compare, um, what was it? Was it mailing list partners? Something along that? Or social mm -hmm. media partners like Meet Edgar and mm -hmm. co-schedule and we'll have to, um, can someone grab the link from our create, create Slack channel and throw it in Facebook Live? It was a really great ver uh, example um, of how to use that how-to card. It does not have to be just DIY and craft. It's really the how-to instance is, is literally how to do anything. Um, so we've got that. Um, we're working Ooh. on a new corporate website that's going to be gorgeous. We're very excited about it. Um, we're doing two conferences next year, you might have heard, in Chicago and Austin, which we're knee-deep in planning uh, about right now. Um, the tech guys wanted me to cover that they are working on video uploads directly from the WordPress dashboard um, using your, your Mediavine control panel. Um, more card types for the Create uh, by Mediavine plugin. So travel, I think, is up next uh, with like top 10 spots in a city, that sort of thing. Um, we're going to have playlist support for videos and lots of new video features. We're going to be upgrading um, Mediavine Direct with some more stuff. Basically, all of our engineer guys are are constantly, and guys and girls, um, we actually hired three new female engineers yesterday, which I'm super excited about. Um, are uh, are looking at the data all the time to figure out how we can improve the scripts uh, for you guys to make sure that you're making the most money possible. Um, product reviews in Create is something that somebody mentioned that I should mention. Um, more dashboard improvements and most importantly, more money. Yay. So that's all. All the good Just stuff. Just not, not a lot. Just a little. Not a lot. Um, you know. Yeah. 40 of us now, right? And so we're always looking at this stuff. Um, all of us, all day long, are looking at this stuff. So, so we've got a question from Suzanne Skelton Egan. She says, when you say, quote, write more content, is there a way the posts need to be connected more than just saying shrimp recipes? Would it be better to narrow it down to say shrimp pasta? Uh, even more granular than that, you should be naturally mentioning the keyword that you're trying to target within your narrative, um, meaning the actual blog post itself, and linking on, on that keyword. So if you have um, three different shrimp recipes, one of them is shrimp pesto, one of them is uh, shrimp pasta, uh, and one of them is shrimp salad, those are the words you should be linking on and you should be naturally um, talking about them within your narrative uh, because Google picks up on that. Um, and so if somebody will throw the par the Food Fanatic Parboil link, uh, that here. really is our best. Oh, awesome. Already in. Okay. So um, for some reason, the live comments are not updating for me very fast. Um, so uh, yeah, go and, re go and actually read the Parboil posts. So um, you'll find that they really aren't that different from each other, but they are different enough that they're not duplicate content within the same site and they all link to each other and they all link to each other on the keyword that the other post we're linking to is trying to target. Um, meaningful linking is what we're looking for. Also, I saw another SEO mention the other day that someone was linking to themselves too much within their blog post. Um, that's not a, not really a thing. Um, no, I think I think Eric last time that he talked about it at the conference or somewhere said he'd prefer that you have one internal link per paragraph. So, <laughs> you know, just we don't do a post that doesn't have at least three. Three is the minimum, exactly. the bare minimum, and then above that is always better. So we we've done yeah. as we've done as many as eight to ten in one blog post. So if, it, if what you're talking, if the content bears it, go for it. Exactly. Uh, Karen Tedesco said, my 70 year old aunt loves my blog, but says the ads make her want to close the page. Well, yeah, so there are always going to be people that 
are not tolerant of ads in any way, shape, or form. Um, some of it may be that um, she's used to reading your website without them. Some of it may be that she's just a bit more sensitive to it because she feels personally connected. Um, what the Coalition for Better Ads, which we're members of, says is that, you know, they paid millions of dollars for different studies on this. And they say that so long as you've got 70% content to 30% um, advertising, that you're not going to upset the majority of your readers. And so that's what we kind of go by. And then we actually provide you with ways to narrow it, to lessen it from there, to have less density from there. Um, I always take the Disney approach to this one. And that is that um, if you get one letter, consider it uh, seven people feel that way. So then compare that to the number of page views or sessions that you're getting in a month. If it's less than 1%, don't change your ad strategy for that 1%. Let them be upset about it. Help your aunt install an ad blocker. Um, that's really, you're not going to be able to please all the people all the time. You're not tacos. So nobody, you know. nobody is tacos. Uh, so Michelle Palin said, which is so unfortunate that we can't personify tacos. Michelle Palin says, is there a group for seeing updates on create or chatting about it? There is a group. Uh, we actually just opened it up. Uh, if you search for Create by Mediavine on Facebook, the group should come up. Um, and we actually just changed it from being for the beta group to being for every anybody and everybody that's using Create. It's not a support avenue. It's for bloggers to help each other um, with finding the best way to use Create. Um, and so, yeah, you should be able to join. Um, it just asks you some questions and then and then we'll approve you pretty much from there. I saw Betsy asking about swag. Yes, and I think that our um, <laughs> people are quoting you everywhere. You can't please everyone all the time. You are not tacos. Um, I, I, I mean, I, that's not a quote sample. for me. That's, oh, it's not? Yeah, that's not a quote for me. No, I saw it. Um, I, there's a place in Austin that always does great signs like that. Megan would know what it is, but um, I don't think it's Matt's. El Rancho, but um, they do stuff like that. They say stuff like that. So like I always say like Justin Queso, that came <laughs> came from Matt's. And I, I like turn it down a nacho. Yeah, turn it down a nacho. That's a good one too. Um, uh, so Betsy wants to know where we can buy Mediavine swag. Um, yeah. Sarah, our, uh, Sarah's, our, Sarah, our office uh, manager has, has an answer that we might be able to post in the comments. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I don't even know about mm -hmm. this. Yeah, I didn't either, but oh, Betsy Eves just gave us 700 taco emojis. <laughs> Tacos for everyone. Tacos for everyone. I love it. <laughs> um, uh, so another thing that you can also do is is come to our conference. You will be inundated with Mediavine swag yeah, if you come to a Mediavine conference. We give you a whole bag full of teal swag. You, you get it all. You get it all there. Okay, Amber, so for your final question, um, I'm going to ask you, what it is about Media Vine that makes you want to get up and work every day and why what motivates you to come every day. And I'm going to give you a second to think about it. I'm going to make a couple of announcements while you while you muster your final answer. OK, so as I said a little bit earlier during the big freeze, uh, we have on 1025. That's two weeks from today, Thursday for our next Teal Talk. We have Marie Leggett. She is the curvy fashionista. She is absolutely fantabulous. And she's going to be telling us all about affiliate marketing and how she got to the place where she is in her career, expanding beyond a blog, branching out into conferences. She knows all the things and she's going to be here. I can't wait to have her. And then upcoming from that, we're going to be talking about media kits and PR and pitching with Steffi and myself. And then we're going to be doing some sessions on organization and Airtable with a couple media Mediavine publishers. And finally, we're going to be talking about YouTube and have some really behind the scenes looks at that that will be exclusive and exciting. And we can't wait for all of it. So, Amber, uh, we've been so grateful to have you here. Tell us what makes what about Mediavine makes you get up in the morning and come to work? The first time and I don't even remember which publisher it was, but the first time a publisher said to me, you've allowed me to quit my job that I hate. 
or uh, somebody that said, uh, you allowed me to take my kids to Disney World. Um, you allowed me to put my kid through private school because he or she was struggling. Like those are the stories and we do them a lot on Media Vine Monday. Um, but those are the things that keep me working the <laughs> 12 to 15 hours I do most days. Um, I mean, everybody on the team knows like I'm working before my kid goes to school, after he goes to school. Uh, we do dinner and bed and bath and all that stuff. And then I'm back at my desk until 11 p.m. Those are the things that keep me at my desk every day um, is being able to help you guys live your dreams. Like it's the coolest, coolest thing. Um, and it's something that, you know, it, Eric literally said to me last week, sometimes I can't believe this is our company. And it, it's so true. Like, it's so awesome. So, yeah, we all, all I think that you get a, a pretty similar answer, um, from all across the, the media vine team spectrum that we're all very, we all feel very privileged to be able to play a part in the monetization and that people trust us with uh, with their websites and their livelihood. It, it, it's not a responsibility that we take lightly. Not um, at all. Okay, so we've got people posting in here. Um, Betsy was asking, ooh, Airtable, is that with Julie? It's actually gonna be with Melissa George and Angela Rathbun. Uh, spoiler, we'll be we'll announcing a little bit more about that later, but we will have a session on Airtable with them. Betsy said, Amber, you inspire me to keep blogging with Mediavine and all that you do to empower us. That's very, very sweet. It is very sweet. Thank you, Betsy. Look at oh. that. And Holly's sad to miss you in Denver. Oh, Aww, Holly, Jen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'll miss you. Um, but I, I have a feeling that we'll be back in Denver. It's it's a great city. Yeah. Okay, yeah. everyone. We're posting stuff about the conferences. Conference tickets go on sale November 15th. We'll be sharing more knowledge about that soon. Everything you need to be on the up and up. And we mm -hmm. are so happy that you're with us. Stay uh, warm, stay toasty, carve a pumpkin. Thank you, Amber, for being with us. Everybody have a great afternoon. Bye, guys. All right. Bye, guys.